Hey there, and welcome to my channel. Hope everybody is having a great week. We here in Florida, uh, at least in my area, um, just miss Hurricane Adalia, so we're doing good here. Um, posted some videos about, um, you know, just basically the flooding in the area, but the flooding is actually already gone, and we're a little bit back to normal. This uh, the tides come in a little bit, so one of the yards across from my place is a little is a little uh, flooded. But anyways, the, what I wanted to chat about today, because oftentimes we do not feel very empowered in our lives. I mean, there's certain situations, obviously, that we're very successful in and we can be feel empowered, but there are also times when we don't feel very empowered in our life and we feel very helpless. And so in those moments, that's the time to really start going within. And now, prayer and meditation and going within doesn't mean you don't act on things here in the physical because then nothing would get done. It's kind of like um, my friend Amika Swami likes to say, uh, I've interviewed him several times if you want to look at my channel. He says we have to go into this do be, do be, do be. So you have to kind of do, take action, be, the being in that presence, that now of the moment, and then you do, and then you be, and then you do, and then you be. What, it's, what he's trying to get at here is that, yes, you do prayer, and you, but then you take action. And so, you know, whatever that action is, I mean, it's like uh, whatever you feel inspired when that inspiration comes in. So, you know, th these can be a lot of things, you know, going to work every day, um, you know, saying so telling somebody that you love them, those kind of things. But what I want to chat about today is the I am presence, and they talk about this in the Bible, but it's also talked about in many other spiritual texts. I'm going to talk about some Christian texts, and then we'll go into other ideas uh, here throughout the video as well. So the first thing I want to read to you is Luke 17, 20, uh, verses 20 and 21. <laughs> and it says in here, now, uh, when he was uh, asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God does not come with uh, observations, nor will they say, see here or see there, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. So this is really interesting because we're all, a lot of people are waiting for saviors. Uh, it could be that they're waiting for the government to save, save them. They're waiting for Jesus to come and save them. They're waiting for aliens to come and save them. There's always somebody, there's, there are people out there that are waiting for something to come and make it better. And the only person that can make your life better is you. Because that here, right in the Bible, says the kingdom of God is within you. And so it's, that presence has always been there. What happens is that we are so filled with doubt. We are filled, and some of these are programs from other people. These are people say, well, it doesn't exactly work that way. <laughs> you know, that's not how it works. You know, and that's their own doubt. And we've allowed their doubt to seep into our minds and in our hearts. And so that's what blocks that knowing of that presence of the kingdom of God within you is our own doubt and the doubt that we've let come in and we've uh, accepted, so to speak, that whatever it is. Now we could look for reasons to blame it and all that kind of stuff. You could spend like an eternity looking for somebody to blame. The truth is right here, that's the person we have to blame. But this isn't about a blame game. This is about empowering ourselves and understanding who we are so we can step into that presence within ourselves. It also says in Exodus uh, chapter three, verse 14, uh, this is uh, when Moses was coming to, um, when he was talking to God, and uh, God, he says to God, basically, well, what should I tell the people of Israel what your name is? And he says, and God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, uh, thus shalt uh, thy say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent unto you. So in other words, I am sent to you to talk, you know, and convey I am's message. And so really what this comes down to, and you really have to think about this too, if you are, if the presence or the kingdom of God is within you, that means the I am presence is within you. In other words, the name of God, so to speak, is within you. The name of the presence of what creates whatever in, ever, in this world. So that's where we have to kind of start looking too. So you could actually start saying a daily affirmation every day of, I am the light of the world. 
Now, light is a metaphor for truth in, in truth and understanding and clarity and that kind of stuff. So when you say, I am the light of the world, not only are you emanating that light, that truth, that clarity, but it, you have it within you because there's another verse that talks about my cup runneth over. So that means when you're full or you're whole and you have that whole presence of who you are and when then that not only fills you up, but whatever spills over goes out to other people. That's what you share. And that's where this reciprocal energy of flow, that kind of figure eight, so to speaking, of what I put out there comes back tenfold. So a lot of times we look at the what I put out there comes back tenfold as like a punishment, like a karma. It's just cause and effect. So when you're giving out effortlessly with ease and grace, because you're full and whole within yourself, then there is nothing to worry about of loss or not having enough. And there's plenty of uh, people that feel that they don't have enough. You can see it all over. You can see it when people cut you off in traffic to get somewhere on time. You can see it. And this is not a judgment because I've been there myself. It's just something to take a look at in ourselves. It, you can see the the fear of not having enough when you go to the grocery store, when a hurricane comes in, all the water is gone. You know, during COVID, all the toilet paper was gone. This is, again, not a judgment. You can just see this fear of not having enough and obviously not looking at this abundance energy that is within all of us. But we've been convinced by whoever, us, that there is not enough. And where, do we, where does that come from? It comes from well-intentioned people like our parents that uh, were had their own limitations and stuff like that. But you can change these programs within, within yourself. So other affirmations we could say, and we could say, I am the light of the world, and through me, divine love's perfect work is manifesting right now. Divine love's perfect work is manifesting right now. Because when you say perfect work, you're covering all bases. So all those things that your monkey mind starts to go in and say, well, wait a second. If I do just sit here, then I might not have what I think I need to get. Well, if it's perfect work, then everything's going to be there. And then you, you could say, well, maybe I'm, I'm not, I can't just sit here. I have to do something. Well, if it's perfect work, you'll know when to actually take action. So, uh, and then you could say, I am the light of the world. Uh, perfect abundance is manifesting right now uh, with me with ease and grace. Ease uh, states that I don't need all the difficulty that my monkey mind tries to create. And grace means that it just comes, ease and grace just means you want it to just flow in and flow out. And whatever lessons you need to, they come just like this. And so now you're declaring to the world, this is what you would love. And so then it goes that you can also say, I am the light of the world and I live a perfect life right now. And then you say three times, I am that, I am, I am that, I am, I am that, I am. Why do you say it three times? Because that literally solidifies it. I am that, I am. But the most important thing is when you say these affirmations, it has to be done in the heart. So drop into the heart and you say, you would just feel that I am the light of the world. And you feel that presence within yourself and you feel it going in and going out. Because when you go in, and then you go out, it creates this flow of energy that you're not only the light for yourself, but you're the light for everybody else. And then guess what? They're the light for you and so forth. It's this reciprocal energy because the universe works in that flowing energy between all of us. And so it really just kind of gives you this uh, powerful essence of giving and taking. So you're, you're replenishing and you're giving and you're receiving. But what is the one thing in the world that we, a lot of us have trouble doing? We have trouble receiving. So we have our hands up, we're very giving, we have our hands up and we're like, no, 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 it's okay. We don't, you know. But the problem is, is when you don't receive, you're not allowing yourself to replenish yourself. And so when you're not allowing you to replenish yourself, you become exhausted because you're giving and giving and giving and you're giving to people that aren't necessarily giving back. And so you don't have this essence of this flow of energy that replenishes you in this I am presence. Because if we're in the I am presence, we are creating and co-creating all at the same time. So it's very beautiful. You could also go on and you could say, I am well. I am peaceful. You could just say this all day long. I am successful. I am strong and vital. 
I am free and full of joy. I am prosperous. I am, um, and then you say, I will arise each morning full of energy and vitality. So you can just kind of say these things all the time. And these are things, it, these are thoughts and feelings you could flood your mind and heart with instead of all the, well, I don't know if things are going to work out. Are things going to work out? Are you sure? Are you sure? And so I've heard them all. So guess what? For the Christians out there, um, Jesus said the I am presence too. So he said, I am the way, the truth, and life. He said this in John uh, chapter 14, 6. He didn't, and he, he didn't say, I think I'm the truth and life. He said, I am the truth and the life. So he, and then he goes on to say, I am the resurrection and the life. John 11, 25. Then he says, I am the bread of life. John 6, and I have it written down here, I think 48. I'll get that correct on the, on the little image that's going to come up here. Um, I am the king. So, yeah, he says he's the king. Guess what? If you are children of God, you're royalty too. The only reason why you're a prince and princess is because you haven't realized it here and here that I am the king means I am here in this presence and that I am presence. So God means goodness over doubt. So it's the goodness in you that overcomes the doubt in you, the little devil and the little uh, angel on the shoulder, so to speak, the little devil that's like, oh, you know you can't do that. You know that's just not right. I'm afraid what people are going to think of you or all that kind of stuff. Well, I am not here to allow other people's opinions to affect my happiness and nor should you and trust me i've done it i've been there got the t-shirt still some happens sometimes and it's something sometimes a reminder to us when we fall into it again a reminder of who we are and that we are beautiful and that we are lovable and that we are deserving and that you deserve the best and you deserve the best of everything. So these are just kind of things that we started to look at. And so he says, uh, I am the good shepherd. He doesn't say, I, I think I'm a good shepherd. He says, I am the good shepherd, meaning he's a good shepherd and tends to his flock. That means your friends and your family. And a good shepherd doesn't mean you're codependent. It means you are there in balance and you are the, you're literally living the life that you want to live for yourself. And guess what? As a result, you're giving permission to other people to live the life that they want. So just something to think of. Says, um, so he also says in John uh, chapter 8, verse 12, he says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So when Jesus is be the begotten son of God, he becomes the begotten son of God because when he was baptized by John the Baptist, he illuminated himself in this I am presence, the Holy Spirit, uh, Christ consciousness, whatever you want to refer to it. He allowed this presence to guide him. In other words, he invoked the I am presence in him to guide him, to make that his way of life, to his way of living. And as a result, he lived a blessed life. Because even though all these things happened to him out here and he was hurt and all that kind of things, he knew who he was. It was them that didn't know who they were because he was mirroring back to them all the things that they, don't want to, they didn't want to say on this stuff. And that's really talked about in the story of Mary Magdalene when he starts writing on the ground and he says, he without sin cast the first stone. Because that when they saw, they really realized he was mirroring back to them, we have all sinned. And what does sin mean? Sin means turning the back on the presence of who you are, that kingdom of God within you, when you go against yourself. In other words, there's nothing wrong with going out and having a good time or partying and doing all those things. But when it keeps you from that presence within you and that relationship of that presence within you, so that you can find that true happiness, that true joy, that true part of yourself. See, we've made God separate from us. So this being in the sky that's sitting there up on this throne, uh, casting uh, judgment down upon us. And so that feels very foreign. It makes us angry. It makes us upset and kind of stuff. And that is not who God is. God's right here. 
God's right within you. And so then it goes on to say, um, and then so because the essence of the energy is within us, uh, we are knowingly create issues with ourselves. So we'll, uh, we do things like we say, I am sick. Or if you have a diagnosis, I, have, I am a cancer patient. You, instead of that, say, I have a diagnosis of cancer. But when you say, I am a cancer patient, you are declaring it with the force of energy that it lies within you to solidify that. You could also say, I am healthy and start strong and vibrant. So people would say, well, if I have cancer, I'm not healthy. Okay, duh, here's the deal. So it doesn't mean you don't go and do all the things that you're supposed to do to become healthy, but you're changing your mindset inside and the energy that is pushing there. Now, there is a physical thing going on with you, but if you start saying and you start feeling this in your mind and your heart, I am healthy, I am, vi I am vibrant, I am strong, I, I, I am. You could even just say, if you don't have any strength or anything else, you could just say, I am and you can remember a time when you were very healthy and hold on to that image and say, I am that. I am. I am that. I am. Sometimes when my mind, my monkey mind's going, I find something and I literally just focus in on that to it, where it literally just starts to change the dynamics of what's going on inside of me. And I may go inside and start looking at why is this, strength, this thought so strong within my mind and heart? And so I have to go in there and look at that. And sometimes I have to do forgiveness, which means letting go. Uh, sometimes I have to do a lot of other things. And these are just things that we have to take a look at when we're doing our work. And so you can also say this. You could say, instead, of, you, might have, you might have, I am a failure. I mean, I know I've had that thought before. We've all had it, right? And so you can say, instead of that, I am successful. And guess what? If you've got your bills paid, and you've got food in the uh, in the refrigerator, and everything is taken care of, and you have love in your heart, and people care about you, and you have friends, and you're smiling all the time, you're not a failure. You're just not. So there may be things that didn't happen exactly the way you wanted to them to. You're still not a failure because you're successful in so many areas. And so it just kind of goes on. You could, you could say, well, this is one I know we can all relate to. I am broke. So a friend calls you up and says, hey, you want to go out to the movies? And you don't have a lot of money. You say, you know, I really can't right now. Um, and then guess what? Maybe the friend says, hey, I want to, I'll just pay for it. And you're like, oh, no, I couldn't. I mean, we could, please just shut up right there. I mean, really, I mean, are you that, like, so frustrating? Because I used to do it to myself. Oh, no, I could. No, I, um, I had to tell myself to shut up. Just shut up. Your friend is offering to do something for you because maybe you've done it for them before or whatever. Or you, then your mind thinks, well, they're, maybe you didn't know them really well. And they're like, oh, you know, I'll pay for it. And then you're like, they want something out of me. I'm like, just shut up. Just shut up. So because the boundary is, you're not going to cross whatever boundary, but the abundance is there. You know, enjoy yourself and allow them to. Now, everything is in balance and everything is in moderation, obviously. Um, but it's just one of those things. So we've all been there, but we could start saying, instead of saying I'm broke, we could say I am abundant and all my needs are taken care of. I mean, I've literally had uh, clients and friends um, take me on trips and vacations. You know, one of my close friends, uh, several months ago, I went on a trip to Cancun and uh, because she gets free cruises. So I went on the cruise, and she then paid for my for my birthday. It was kind of a belated birthday, but she told me about it on my birthday. And I got to go to this great place that everybody's told me about called Mr. Sancho's in, uh, in Cozumel. So, I mean, that's abundant. That's abundant. And so it's one of those things, and there's always this love and this exchange between me and this friend. So it's one of those things where you really have to start thinking uh, um, how we look at these things. And um, so you can also, here's an interesting, we all have this cycle that goes in us. I am not good enough. Instead of that saying, I am more than enough. And so you're going to have these thoughts that pop in your head. So you say, instead of that, I am more than enough. Over and over. You're trying to change. And you can even say to the I am not good enough energy, you can say, no, no, I am more than enough. Because what you're doing is you're canceling out the energy 
that is there that's saying I am not good enough. And then you're now inserting the new program. It's like literally, um, you know, changing a program in a computer. You have to, you know, take the old one out sometimes and then you put the new one in and then you reboot the computer so it restarts itself. It's a reset. So some people would say, well, yeah, this is great, but I'm not Jesus or I'm not God. Well, actually, so it says in John uh, chapter 10, verse 34, it says, I have said you are gods. And th this is uh, Jesus telling, uh, basically, they're getting ready to stone him because they're mad. He says, I've done all these miracles, all these wonderful things. So for which thing do you think I've been blasphemous? And you're going to stone me. And he, they say, well, we're not going to do it for all the wonderful things you've done. We're going to do it because you've said you're God. And he comes out and he says, um, <laughs> he basically says, I have said, isn't it written in your laws that you are God? Now, here's the part. Now, this is not a new thing, by the way, uh, that people have been talking, because I've been speaking about this for probably 20 years. And it really upsets people. Because they really have been convinced of this whole sinner thing. And that as a sinner, that <laughs> you couldn't possibly be. But then they'll preach that our job is to become more Christ-like. Because the idea is really to become more Christ-like and walk in the steps of Jesus. Now he says, you know, he who shall follow me will never be cast into darkness. What he's talking about here is, I got it. I figured it out. And there's been other, uh, um, basically, saints or uh, messiahs out there or messengers or prophets out there that have said the same thing. Zoroaster, Buddha, they've all talked about similar stuff, but there's more than that. So, But basically what he's saying is, uh, I figured it out. And that's what he became, Jesus of the Christ. Not It's not a freaking last name. It's called Christ consciousness. And so then then he goes into, he says, uh, Matthew, Matthew 17, uh, verse 21, or verse 20, sorry, he replied, because you have so little faith, truly I tell you, if you have faith that is small as a mustard seed, you can say to the mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. So what he's saying here is that you have the potential to do the things that he's done. And actually, part of the story is that these ladies came up and said that your disciples, we went to them to see if they could heal my child, and they weren't able to. And then they, when he was able to heal them, they said, well, how did you do that? And um, he says, well, because you have little faith. And this, he, he said this more than once or something similar to it. But what he's trying to get at is I'm here to try to tell you that you have the ability to change your life. So this whole you, you're God's concept. It's not about arrogance because the other part of this, and most people don't understand, is that if you get into your ego, if this becomes like, I am God, then uh, what's going to happen is it's it's going to come from, so if it's coming from this area of, I don't have enough instead of, I am abundant, if it's coming from a place of, not in your heart, if it's coming from a place of, I am God, and so I should be able to heal myself. Well, that doesn't mean you don't go through the experience because what's happened is that we are not convinced of who we are, that we are a child of God. We, we see it on paper. We see it on paper. We read it, all that kind of stuff, but we haven't figured it out here. So the part here is we're here practicing and learning and shedding away the layers to find the truth of who we are on an authentic level. And so as a result of that, we have to be careful because it's really, that's why that whole give and take and receive, because if we get into this idea of just being in the head, we will fail at this. Meaning, not that we're failures, but we won't see the whole picture because we won't allow that presence to have us live in the now of the moment. I hope that makes sense. Um, these are things that I've been really wanting to chat about for a while. I used to talk about them for a long, long time ago, and then I stopped. It's in my book, Peace Be Still, uh, which you can find on my website, a lot of it, not all of it. I wrote that about 11 years ago, uh, going on 12 years ago. Um, but these are things that are truth. And, uh, and the interesting part about the Bible is that, yes, it's been tainted. It's been twisted. 
Uh, we've been lied to about a lot of things. However, all spiritual texts, not just the Bible, all spiritual texts, when they've been written and they've been divinely inspired, they can change the words, they can take things out, but the truth is, is you cannot hide the truth. Somehow it's going to come out. Somehow goodness is always going to overcome doubt. Now our mission is to overcome that doubt within ourselves. And one of those steps is to understand the I am presence. Hope everybody has an amazing day and many blessings. Bye-bye.